Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for the opportunity we have to meet together and have the opportunity to learn, um, gain new perspective from others' points of view and please help us be able to come together and make decisions and uh, be effective and efficient in our meeting and be able to learn and grow, uh, use these skills and lessons that we learn in our future endeavors and see these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Does one of you want to lead tonight, or do you want me to ask the questions? I can. Okay. Let me, uh, let me just send this really quick. Okay, I think I have it up to, let's see. At least I did. Oh, did we want to have a spiritual thought also? Yeah. Is it switching the screen when you guys talk? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because it's not switching on mine like it normally does. Oh. Hmm. Did you select, is, have you clicked on one of our screens? I don't know, but I'd rather show. Oh, there we go. I'd rather show one of you guys than me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's weird. I don't know what it's doing. Huh. But it's saying we're recording, so it's all good. So, do either of you have a spiritual thought you'd like to share? Just <laughs> I don't know, I guess I have one. So my brother entered the MTC this week, and my grandparents came down, and they were talking to us. My grandpa talked about his mission, and when he went on his mission, he um, it was right when the draft was happening. Oh, so wow. they allowed one young man from each state to go um, and uh, defer the draft for two years, and so he was the one that was selected to go. And he had, like, three girlfriends at the time, so he didn't want to go. <laughs> um, but he went, and he got to actually come home every night from the MTC. And uh, when he got out there, he was in the New England mission, and they put him on a train. And so when he got there, nobody knew anything about the gospel. He's like, it's really interesting because it's, like, it's more established than the West Coast, but it's it's just – it was different. And uh, – He's like, I didn't, I didn't get to reap the benefits of his mission. He didn't reap the benefits in his mission. Like, he just knew that there would be great blessings from what he was doing. And while he was there, um, he ended up teaching this uh, lady. And they, uh, his only one and only baptism on his mission was this old lady that they had never actually met. They met her for her baptismal interview and the day she got baptized. Other than that, they had communicated with her through letters. And she talked to them about planting and farming and how they were planters. And then um, because they had planted a seed in her and then they had helped nurture it. And then her being baptized was harvesting the benefits of that uh, planting. And he said that he was a planter, but my brother was probably going to be more of a harvester or a nurturer. And he's like, just be sure that even though you may want to be a harvester. Don't forget to plant in other people. Like, don't give up on them. And so it was interesting because we talked about it for a little bit. And it's important to remember to do that, not just on missions, but like in general, to not forget that you can plant seeds of faith in anyone and everyone around you. That's cool. That's Sorry, awesome. guys. My internet disconnect. That's okay. We're just having our spiritual thought just now. So we can we can go on to the first question. It says, put yourself in the shoes of Brentwood Associates Management. You must decide whether or not you will exit Zoe's Kitchen now, and if so, what is the best exit option? As a group vote, what should Brentwood do with Zoe's Kitchen? So we have the three options are, um, oh, what's IPO? It's initial, or what is it? What does IPO stand for again? 
Uh, I don't know what it stands for, but I know what it means. Oh, it's initial public offering. So offering yeah. stock in the company. Um, so either do that or sell to a strategic buyer or financial buyer. And then the third option is wait and grow the business until it is more valuable before exiting. So the third option is kind of like, is like a wait and then maybe do one or two. So. I, I vote on wait and to grow the business until it's more valuable before exit. I vote that too. And then later on sell for a strategic buyer, not to a financial buyer. Yeah, that's my vote too, is to wait. Mm -hmm. Why did you guys say to wait? Andrew? Oh, it, mine was to wait too, but I, I'm curious why you guys thought to wait. Because their IPO right now, it's not, it can be better with the time, with all the problems they're having right now. What were the problems that they were having? Did you say that they were having problems? Oh, oh she dropped off. Oh. Oh. I think they should wait. I think they should wait and grow a little bit more uh -huh. before they decide to either go public or sell to a financial buyer. Yeah. Because I was under the impression that the company was doing really well, like it was picking up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. That, I mean, that's, I mean, why, if it ain't broke, don't fix it just yet, you know? Yeah. Right. Cause it's like, and it didn't seem like they're very sold on buying it or selling it either. Like it seems like they want to maybe hold on to it. Yeah, it seemed kind of. I don't know. Timid. Cause like even when in investment banks were contacting them of, hey, are you guys going public soon? Obviously, it was a viable company that they wanted to part in already, mm -hmm. and they didn't seem very like they were so timid about like a response. They were timid about like how they felt about it. So yeah. that indicated to me that it was going to be, it was, it, it was something that they weren't, they didn't really want to make a decision because I think it's something that's already going good. I mean, why, why choose otherwise? Yeah. And I think they just made a bunch of, um, to their operations. So it wouldn't make sense to like make those changes and then sell it, like not see where that goes. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say, Jill? I also think that like the IPO um, process is huge, like mm -hmm. takes forever. So I think, I don't know, I think like, they'd be smart to hang out a little bit longer and then decide yeah. later to figure out do they want to go the IPO process or do they want to go the strategic buyer or financial buyer. <clears throat> but I think they should wait. I'm up, I'm up yeah. Same. I think it, it, it's kind of like along the lines of like, you don't harvest the fruit before it's, before it's ripe. Waiting. No, Yeah. I agree. Sorry. <laughs> right. <That's laughs> <tired. laughs> he's like, can you help me? And I was like, brush your teeth. Like, you should know how to do that. And he's like, no, I need help spitting. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love little kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta love your family, right? That is funny. That's cute. Um, all right. Uh, next question. As a group, each individual state his or her position, which we did. If you all agree uh, at the outset, take a counter position and explore uh, why you should consider those other options. Um, for me, considering an, an initial public offering, I know... I've known a few business owners and I've like right when I first came home from my mission, I worked for part time for one of my, uh, my, fr one of my friend's parents who he's like a really big time business owner, um, an entrepreneur, kind of a jack of all trades. But one of his businesses that he worked with his wife and started up was they make like large clocks, like large wooden clocks. And, um, so w one of his things that he told me was, he's like, I, I want to get this business going. And then he's like, as it starts going and picking up speed, I want to, I want to make it public as soon as possible. So coming from his standing point, I mean, I, I don't, 
understand as much about what it means to go public, or at least all the like the, the the processes. But it was something that was important to him. That I mean, I trust him as a business owner. Apparently, it was important he felt for their business to go public as soon as possible to start selling stock. So. For some, I think for some businesses, it can make a huge difference in their productivity, which that, that's that's something that could potentially help them as well. So to go along with that, Andrew, I, as I was reading um, in the case study where it says should Zoe, is it Zoe's? Is that how yeah. you say their company yeah. name? Yeah. Uh, were contacted by over 20 investment banks asking if they might be interested in going public. So then um, they said this, when you get these many phone calls from investment banks, you really, you have to really give some thought to what they're saying. So yeah. I think you're right. Like if so many people are interested in them, then they should really look into like, the right option or not for them. Yeah. Which, I mean, that would be a good indicator from the fact that they were contacted so many times that it would be a good option. Plus, I know there's huge tax breaks for when you go public. Yeah. So. Interesting. That, that still could be a viable option for them. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so the first bullet point um, underneath that question was, uh, why does Brentwood want, even want to exit now? Why do you guys think that Brentwood even wants or is considering exiting the market? My initial thought would be that they would want to uh, count, like take what they've earned and kind of mm -hmm. move on to something else. Yeah. They know that this is the next step that they can go to with this company. So that would be one reason why they want to exit now is just to like move on, I guess. One of the big things too, if if we go back to the reading, um, let me see if I can find it. It said that this is the longest that um, Brentwood had held or at least carried a certain any certain business or specific business in their portfolio for this long. Usually by now they were they were just about done because I, I feel like they had probably found it more viable to them to do what they can and for, for a business and just have high turnover. Kind of like inventory for like a store. The faster they turn over inventory, the more money they make. And I think they were going that route and this is the longest they had ever kept something. So that's why they wanted to exit is just because that was their kind of business model. Mm -hmm. High turnover. I agree with you. I felt like he was like he couldn't wait to get rid of, of the business. Oh, we lost her again. Oh. <laughs> Dang it. She's having the same problem I was having a couple weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Mackenzie, what do you think? <sighs> I'm still trying to gather thoughts. I'm, I'm like reading and listening at the same time. So it's like going back and forth. Um, I agree though. I think, I think that, yeah, the reason that they, they need, I think they need to wait. And I agree with the, the fact that they need to, that the other option would be to go public. But there's like a lot of scary things with going public, which I think is why they need to wait. Mm -hmm. Just because mm -hmm. the more they mature, the more firms will be interested in them and the better the better it'll be to exit because you don't gain anything by forcing an early exit so mm -hmm. yeah. sorry 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 it's been a nightmare that's okay that's okay <laughs> finish what what were you saying so finishing up I, in, when they ask what could go right and what could go wrong uh-huh what could go right like they have potential to grow a lot of the company and what could go wrong is like if they wait that long, they could lose the the window mm -hmm. to get the deal. Yeah, it was interesting to read and to really consider how um, sensitive each choice is, or their how sensitive their options are, because um, one influences another, and 
you know, um, I, I keep thinking of this in terms of like growing fruit, but I mean, like if you go the option of uh, offering an initial or um, your initial public offering, your IPO, um, if it doesn't go well, people won't trust you as a business. You won't be seen as something viable. So then it's kind of like, oh, no one will really care anymore. But then you could also keep the business and they could end up running it into the ground unknowingly or it, it could end up just crashing. So then, I mean, in that case, then selling would be the best option because then they made it out with, with some money on it. Maybe not as much as they could have, but they made out at least with something rather than losing. So. I think that's the scary part too, is like even with the IPO, if you fail, then you fail huge mm -hmm. with um, other companies and investors. Yeah. So he wants to join. <laughs> yeah. One thing I was gonna show you, I don't know if you guys saw this map. Did you guys see this map at all? Yeah. So I think it's like interesting from 2007 to now, or to 2013, like how much they've grown, how much more will they grow later on? Yeah. If they hold on a little bit longer. <clears throat> That's a I just lot thought that of map expansion. was interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is funny. I've actually, when I first was reading it, I was like, I've heard of Zoe's Kitchen before. And then I realized I've driven past it. It was by some of my old offices. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, in Arizona? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't too so far. So you think of their expansion, they could expand a ton within a few years after that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So moving on, um, how much is Zoe's worth under each exit option? Discuss with each, with, with each other how you got your answers as a group, come up with a consensus as to what Zoe's is worth. I haven't done the math yet. No, I haven't either. I have it on that one. Um, let's see, what differences did you observe in the valuations based on who buys the company? Does this make any sense? Discuss as a group. I think that one requires math too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but without doing the math, by searching uh, the definition of a strategic buyer or uh -huh. financial buyer, I think if we sell, if they sell for a strategic buyer, mm -hmm. they're gonna get a, a higher price. And if they sell for a financial, they're gonna sell a little bit lower because financial, it's more like a quick deal. Yeah. And buyer it's it's it takes longer and it's like for a long-term business plan and I think with an IPO too it's gonna take even more money than either of those options that they would lose out on too because mm -hmm. they and have to pay all the the clerical and all the other costs that are associated with it yeah. Plus, it's going to take them longer because it'll take months before they get even approved through the SEC, I think is what it was. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So. And, up. and says, okay. why would you anyone sell to a financial buyer instead? Um, only if they want to have the deal done quick. Like, the one yeah. for yesterday, they, want, they would do for a financial, but they, they wouldn't receive as much as they would for a strategic. Yeah, and I think with strategic, it, it's more of um, like a more of a bidding process rather than with financial. I think financial uh, buyers wouldn't be as you you couldn't move with them at all in trying to increase your your profit off of it. Because strategic, they're willing, I think, to work with you in trying to figure out a price that's going to benefit them. It's kind of a competitive thing, whereas, like you said, with financial, it's just it's quick. And they're probably going to all offer around the same price. And I think they'd lowball it too, or mm -hmm. go on the lower end of things rather than the higher end of things too. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Considering some of the math, though, let's see. For in just 2012, um, they had revenues of 80 million. So from the point when they had only a few to when they expanded, 
they expected to increase to revenues of 115 million. Um, which, like how you're saying, how I mean, they had grown so much already when you pulled up when you showed us the map. They had grown mm -hmm. so much in just that short amount of time. I mean, we can only consider how much more of a viable option it is to wait because of how much they were able to grow in such a short amount of time. Right. So, because that's what, uh, almost 30 million that they grew. Mm-hmm. 35 million, right? Yep. It says such a short time. Yeah. Let's see. Especially yeah, if they expanded more through Arizona and other southern states like they're close to on that map. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that they would grow a ton. Yeah. <laughs> so. I was looking at some of the other math to kind of help answer those last few questions for us. Um, I'm not sure. I think that's the end of our questions. If we wanted to, if we felt the need to email each other any of the other math that we were able to figure out. Okay. So okay. I think that's it. I don't know Hi. if any of you guys got the <clears throat> email from Brother Roper on uh, just a couple days ago, but next week's assignment is like a two part assignment. So uh -huh. Victoria and Andrew, you have to work together on something as far as the case is concerned and Mackenzie and I have to work on something and then we have to get together. So there's like probably going to be like a meeting that the two, uh, the two groups have to have before we all meet together. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have read ahead or read his email, but I was trying to figure out what he was referring to. Uh, mm -hmm. I still wasn't able to see where, what we do for the groups. Maybe they'll send out another email. I don't know. Right. So I just wanted to mention that so you guys were aware of that for next week's assignment. Yeah. I'll try and read through it again tomorrow and see if I find anything. So. Okay. All right. Anything else? All righty. No, I think that's good. All right. Guys. We'll talk to you guys later then. Okay. See ya. Right, we'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye.